be careful about pushing this narrative out that every woman that's with a lollipop suck a lame of a child man is a victim. There are women who truly are victims and typically they were raised in some ultra religious cult like environment. They were picked up by an old predator that when they were young and in their teens or they grew up in a very abusive home. But the average American woman out here who's with the knucklehead of a man, she just wanted a man. She didn't want to be alone with those kids. She thought because she gave him several kids, he was going to change. Or she thought once she married him, he was going to act right and grow up. No. Let's tell the truth about it. There are plenty of women out here that know every piece of self-worth that they have until it comes to a man. All of a sudden, she's not capable of knowing right from wrong. These same women that y'all keep patting and rubbing on their backs, it's okay, sis, you didn't know what you were doing. He manipulated you, he conned you, are the same women raising these men that y'all are complaining about or are raising the sons that will eventually be the men that your daughters are going to complain about. This idea that women cannot be or should not be or it's not supposed to be or it's cruel to be held responsible for their actions is beyond me. Especially when women are the ones out here raising the next generation of humans. Women are out here making moves. But for some reason, we're too frail to know what we're doing when it comes to men. No, miss me. Miss me, baby. What are these facts that I'm hearing from this lady's mouth? Oh my God. You speak to these women who have baby fathers, right? Who have five or six baby mothers. They knew all his dirt. They knew what he was. But something in them, I don't know what it is. It tells them he's going to change. They're the one. He didn't do it for them, but he will do it for me. It makes absolutely no sense. And here's my thing. All these women laying down with these bums. I get it. Women go through phases. I, I, I've realized. They go through phases where they can't help it, right? They got to have the bad boy. They got to have the bummy guys. Why are you risking getting pregnant? In the guise of, he could wear a condom. He can't get pregnant. If you're laying down with a bum, at least ensure that you don't have his child. <laughs> I feel like it's so easy. They're not even trying to get us to love them. They want us to need them so they don't have to evolve. So this comment is kind of like in response to men being shitty and not meeting women where they are in the modern era. And it really encapsulates a lot of what I've been thinking about. I've gotten a lot of pushback recently from men in my comment section saying awful fucking things. But a lot of the things that they're saying when I say, oh, women are good being single, they say, well, how are you going to catch the spider? How are you going to open the jar? How are you going to change your oil? What happens when there's an intruder? And to me, that just lets me know that they see themselves as a tool for women. They don't see themselves as a person in a relationship with another person. They see them as a tool to be utilized, to be used, and like they just want us to need them so badly. I actually agree with this take, and I see comments like this so many times, I don't get it. Like, there's so many reasons why men add value to women's lives. This isn't the go-to. <laughs> Because I honestly think that they don't understand what we're even asking for, which is like emotional evolution. We're asking for them to become fully formed people and to meet us in a relationship as an individual who wants a connection, who wants to form, you know, a bond that carries you through life, mutual encouragement. That's not what they think they're providing. That's not what they think their role is. And historically, maybe it's not what their role has been, right? They've been a financial provider um, and a provider for security. But like the thing is, we don't, we don't need that anymore. So that's not what we're looking for anymore. And sure, if there's a spider, maybe I'll squeal, but I'll be okay. And like, if I have to get my oil changed, I'll go do that. And somebody may rip me off. What the fuck ever. I'd rather have that happen than have to baby a man who doesn't know how to process his own emotions. So like, I don't know. I, I honestly, I don't think that they understand what we're asking for. And so they are just resorting to like, well, you're not going to be able to open jars without us because that's all they think that they can provide, which is like also very sad. And it just shows how 
underdeveloped they really are. So thank you for this comment. It's like perfect. It's beautiful. It, it really gets to the point. So the girls who get it, get it. So here's the problem with these women, right? They essentially want men to become more feminine, but they also want them to keep the good masculine traits. Essentially, they want the perfect man. He doesn't exist. And there's this idea because women have changed. We've evolved. The modern woman. We've taken on more masculine traits and we're doing great. Why can't you take on more feminine traits? Women are worse than ever. Women add less value to a man's life than ever. This is the worst version of a woman. You essentially want the perfect man, but you are so imperfect. You haven't been able to take the good masculine traits and keep the good feminine traits. You've taken the good masculine traits and you've also taken the worst masculine traits. So if men become more feminine, what you're going to see is they're going to take the feminine traits, the good ones, but they're also going to take the bad ones. And what these women don't like to admit is there are a lot of feminine men out there. There are a lot of men who are in touch with their emotions and whatever the case is, emotionally intelligent, and they, they, they're ready. You don't like them. That's the problem. It's not that like they don't exist. It's that like you don't like them. You want to turn the masculine men. You want them to become. It's not going to happen. Men are perfect. Men have flaws. You must learn how to deal with them. Or like this woman, this woman, she posts videos of, you know, 72 reasons why I like being alone. Just be alone. Just continue to do what you're doing. And I'm not saying that there aren't ways men need to improve and whatever the case is. But what you're asking for is never going to happen. You're never going to get, you're literally, in the most literal, you want the perfect man. He doesn't exist. I've decided to move into another direction. That's how you feel, I gotta respect it. And that's all you have to say. If that's how I feel. Boys, there is nothing better than a woman saying to you, hey, we're done. I don't feel like you're doing this and this. And you just say... Okay, that's how you feel. Bro, mic drop. Because a lot of the times what women do, they give you the fear of abandonment with hopes that you get on your knees and you beg and you plead. And when you don't, oh my God. There was this girl one time who texted me this long novel saying how she didn't feel like we're compatible and she didn't feel like we should keep seeing each other. So I read it, held down the message and gave it a thumbs up. This girl wrote me another novel an hour later saying that I don't care, saying that I'm so cold hearted. Some women use fear of abandonment to make you give them reassurance. And to me, that's toxic as hell. How about you ask for reassurance other than playing some toxic game? So moral of the story is this. If a girl tells you all these things, how you're not compatible, she doesn't want to see you anymore. The best thing to do is say, hey, no worries. I understand. Watch that girl come running back. What this man is saying is so true, right? There are literally herds of women on the internet talking about how much they hate or dislike or won't date nonchalant men. Because you see, when people project anger onto you and they project their emotions onto you, they want you to feel how they feel. And when they don't accomplish that, it irks them, it hurts them. So when a woman's coming at you when she's doing whatever the case and you're just sitting there chilling, and you're not showing anything and you're just calm, it makes them even more angry. And obviously they don't like that. I'm 28 years old and I just moved back home to live with my family because nobody told me that when you're on your growth journey and you're trying to figure out what you want for your life, that you're gonna end up blowing up your whole life. With story time, I turned 28 three weeks ago and I've been freaking out about that for the whole year really because if I had asked younger me, I thought by 28 my life would be so together. I thought I would have been married by now. I thought I would have had kids by now. Like I look at my mom, by the time that she was my age, she had an eight year old and a four year old. The ironic part is that it's not for lack of a partner. Like I feel like a lot of times the people who don't have those things yet is because they haven't found that person yet to do those things but i've been in a long-term relationship for the last nine years since i was 19 years old in college and it hasn't been an easy journey like we did break up twice during that but we kept finding our way back to each other but my thing is being on this growth journey for the last couple of years i've started questioning a lot of what do i actually want for myself outside of what 
society kind of conditioned me to want growing up so i've been questioning marriages i've been questioning having kids meanwhile having an amazingly beautiful partner who wants all those things and there's a part of me that wanted so badly to give all that to him because i know he's going to be an amazing husband i know he's going to be an amazing father but I look back to the dreams that I had when I graduated college and the things that I feel like I didn't go for because I was scared of failing and instead I chose safety and security. Like, I remember at that time, my biggest dream was to travel the world. Like, I wanted to be a digital nomad and build an online business so I could work from wherever and just travel. I've also always been a city girl at heart. Like I lived in Philadelphia, I lived about 20 minutes out of the city, which was great and convenient, but I always wanted to live like in an apartment where I could just walk out and walk wherever I needed to go and just be in the middle of it. So I decided like, just cause I'm turning 28 doesn't mean my whole life is over. Like it's not too late to go for those things and try for those things. So then I started having conversations with my boyfriend about how that's what I really wanted to make the next year about is like going for those dreams and traveling and moving to the city and after a lot of conversations it just seems like that's not what he wanted he just turned 30 this last year and he wants that stability and he wants to build for the future and he wants marriage and kids and pretty much what i wanted was the exact opposite like i'm pushing that further down the line for the sake of going out and traveling in the last couple of weeks have been the most heartbreaking thing of realizing that in order for us both to get what we want we might not be able to do that together and it's one thing to like end a relationship because something really bad is happening somebody cheated on you or they were doing you dirty but it's a whole another thing when there's like so much love there but just your paths aren't aligned anymore weeks of heartbreaking conversations led to me moving back home and the life that i had built with him for the last nine years is done and now i have to learn to build a new one for myself and I just feel like I've been all over the place and in I guess a moment of like manic breakup madness I decided I'm gonna go backpacking Central America and I booked a one-way flight to Guatemala leaving in the middle of January and now that I'm home I'm gonna spend the next six weeks getting ready to go on that trip and I am terrified and sad and just feeling all the feelings life just doesn't feel real right now and i feel like i'm just making crazy moves and decisions like why did i book a trip to central america when i don't even know how to swim so then i was like well i'm gonna have to learn how to swim in the next six weeks so what did i do i signed up for swimming classes i start my first swimming class tonight I literally feel like i'm losing my mind but i'm trying to just keep moving forward and i think i'm just gonna start using this this account as like my video diary and like just document these next six weeks and then i guess that three month trip and go from there i just feel like i'm trying to shove down all the sadness and just believe that even though right now it is like heartbreaking that maybe in some twisted way the universe is looking out for me and it'll all work out yeah, so I'm going to keep it real, right? This is some of the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my life. I, I'm sorry. When I watch this, she seems like a nice woman. I'm not, like, attacking her. As, I don't think she's, you know? But this is so ridiculous. Now, society has women working so backwards. It's... And I don't know how... They don't see how illogical this is. You're sacrificing... Having a family and having children for your career. The retirement age is 67, brother. We're like, you have your entire life to travel and work. Is there, is traveling time bad? Is, is traveling time bad? Do you have to stop traveling at a certain age? They're so wrapped up in, I want to travel young, I want to, why? What's the difference between traveling by yourself and traveling with your husband and child? Oh, I've got less freedom. Less freedom to do what? I want to go out clubbing. What, you want to go drinking? You're a child. Grow up. You're 28 years old. You have seven years until geriatric pregnancy. If you are a woman who doesn't want to have kids, doesn't want to have family, you just want to travel, whatever the case is, 
you're not making any sacrifices. So you leaving your partner, you might be sacrificing a relationship, but it's not really a priority. But if you do want to have kids one day, and you do want to have a family one day, sacrificing <laughs> your partner to go traveling is the dumbest shit in the world. It, there's literally no logic behind it. You've been with this man for almost 10 years. You think you're going to find another 10 year relationship after this? The chances are you won't. But again, this is the feminism. This is the independent queen. It's weird. It has them moving backwards. It doesn't make any sense. It really, really doesn't. From somebody that has five degrees and has been searching for almost a year and still hasn't gotten a job. Take this advice. Stop getting the degree. I want every young man and woman that's listening right now to understand this. In the year 2023, moving forward, in instead of looking at what college you want to go to, like when you're in high school, please listen. Please start looking at trades. Start looking at trades. Ladies, if you don't want to, like, obviously you don't want to be a mechanic or no shit like that. You could, you could be a, like the x-ray tech, I forget what they're called, like radiology technicians or whatever, mental hygienist, cosmetology, but the, the whole, like, massages and all that. If you've never run a company, and I want y'all to know something about me, I'm 29. Since I've been 18, I've been starting companies, failing, succeeding, everything. So many companies. And I make, I'm, I'm proud of myself. I lately, especially lately, I'm proud of myself. And I'm not, I'm not talking about something I don't know here, okay? Say you go to school to be a masseuse. You learn about Google ads, Facebook ads, and all that. That'll take a day. You can get two, three clients a day. Say you get two, three clients a day and you charge $90 for a 90 minute massage. You could be making $180 to $270 a day. That's not a lot of money, okay? But that's a very, very good start because when you are at that level, you have time to work on your business acumen, your trade, and you have enough money to live life. Maybe not a glorious, you know, great life, but to live life. And if your business starts to fail, you can go work at Massage Envy or wherever. It's the same thing for young men. Like, you can go be a barber, bro. There's good money there. Nobody there, if they're actually trying a lot, nobody's dead broke. Unless, obviously, they're stupid with the money that they are making. That's a whole other topic. But going to school now, it doesn't, it doesn't do anything for anybody unless you are going for a very specific set of degrees and you know how it's going to be paid for. So I don't care if you're going to the military, mommy and daddy's paying for it, that's the best case scenario. Or you have some scholarships or whatever. So number one, if you can't afford to pay for college, do not go to college. Now when it comes to trade school, if you wanna go be an electrical lineman or something like that, definitely worth it. Ladies, if you wanna be a whatever, like if you wanna be a radiologist, y'all know those certs I'm talking about. Dental hygienist, all that, that stuff pays so well, it's worth it. And it's only two years of school. Go do that and usually those programs are much more affordable than the four-year to six-year degree they're much more conducive to you starting your own company and or getting a job in that field degrees set you up to be employees for life this is why when women talk about how educated they are in comparison to men it makes absolutely no sense because men have realized that you don't need a degree to make money you can make money in so many different ways now all a degree is going to do as someone who has a degree is get you in debt and most of these degrees are useless just go on the internet and you can see how many people have left uni two, three, four years ago and cannot find a job in their field. Now, me personally, I'd never deter anyone from getting a degree. If you want to go to uni, do what you got to do. But if you don't know what you want to do in life, go ahead and learn a trade or just wait because there's no rush. Because these degrees, they ain't special no more. They, they really, really are. Drones. And we do missing these drones. No, I'm saying that phone. Got me just blowing your phone.